Yeah, sorry, can sorry, you answer sorry. that? You're the one with 40 million no, things. But you know what, I think if you look at it from a management point of view of the, the players or the, the, the talent, they're obviously going to say, no way are you leaving them platforms. That's how I make my money. That's how we stay in business. Theoretically. We, yeah, that's how we need you to be in there because you get commercial deals, etc., which is which is the norm. But this is a new way, and I think what we're saying to them is you can migrate people over there but still stay there if you want. You can stay there if you choose, if you need to, but also it's probably better you stay there t until you get to a number that you're happy with over here mm -hmm. so that actually does become sustainable over here as well. But I think it's, it's about a knock-on effect, a domino effect, and, and the more people we gather and get together and build as a community that are singing from the same hymn sheet, the same idea about impact, then people will come naturally and organically in time. But I think at the beginning, I think you, you, you're going to see people... I get asked the same question. I've got a YouTube channel. I do a lot, I'm active on Instagram, etc., Facebook, Weibo and whatnot. And I understand if I want to get everyone from here over to here, I've got to still talk in this, this box for a while. So it's going to take time. And I see, hopefully, I'd love the, the, the perfect scenario for us would be to migrate everybody from there to there. But I know that's going to be a, a, a long haul. And, and we've got a whole roadmap, Russ, on functionality. Mm. So the whole premise is, Tweet on Twitter, keep tweeting there for a minute, dance on TikTok. But actually, the better we feel here, because there's no ads and no hate in this stage, then we can migrate people, we can build our functionality up and all. People are only on Facebook for birthdays and groups, a few groups, so we've, that's pretty easy to replicate. But so it's, it's, it's building out our product roadmap. But what's been really exciting, Russ, is people are saying, We've had enough. We've, you know, we've really had enough mm. of the old world, and we want to transition. And and that's that's the hope. In the, it, it'll take a couple of years, but the hope is that we can have a home base that's really respectful, and where where you I mean, 40 million of your followers are earning 30 pounds a week and changing a the month, world together. A month. A month thanks. <laughs> oh, no, actually, a week. <laughs> Let's make that the goal. But, yeah, thanks, Russ. Oh, we're obsessed about this. So, initially, you can love, so you have to be verified with a Golden 8 Halo to upload content. So, you can create a basic profile, but to upload content, you have to be verified. And that's initially. And then our eighth stage is both curated discovery and people you follow. We are introducing comments, but when we analysed it, and by the way, the platforms could switch off hateful comments in a day. The technology really exists. So we've got some brilliant AI uh, technologists that have built technology to pick it after the fact and re report on it so you can get reported because we have not zero tolerance for hate, and it's much easier to track than you think through comments. But interestingly, we've come up with technology that catches it further upstream. So actually, when people go to post it, it catches them and really lovingly says, eh, are you sure you want to post it? Are you sure you want to say this? So it's actually trying to help catch people before they actually post it. Um, so that technology exists. So. The other thing is that we're all coming here, we're part of the community, we're becoming a eight citizen because we're here to change the world together. And so I don't mind if we don't have the 100,000 people that want to, you know, bring shade because that's not what we're doing here. So it's, you know, when you, if we go on that Big Bang thing and there's a philosopher, Alan Watts, who talks a lot about this, we're all connected and we're going to realise that it's the love that makes us feel better and the, and the, and the unity that makes us feel really purposeful. Can I, can I just add to that as well? I think it's quite an important point about comments because obviously that, that is what drives the anxiety and the fears and whatnot about posting for all generations, not just the, the young, young people. But um, Sue mentioned earlier, I'm filming a documentary at the moment which will be out later in the year and it's about uh, football, but it's about uh, racism, sexuality, and mental health, which is th this probably leads to. 
and it's led me to, to go to Parliament and try and work on legislation that will help protect people from these type of comments. But when you're pushing and you're, you're prodding and you're asking questions at these big social media companies to make change like this, you get a lot of kind of jostling around in their seat and uncomfortable answers and they don't want that uncomfortable conversation because conspiracy theories, negativity, hate speech, etc., all, all forms of dis discrimination feeds what they want and with the end goal is, is money. So all that activity, whether it's negative or positive, works for these platforms. So that's why they're very resistant when it comes to, to change. And only legislation is going to change that or a new platform. And that's why we're here and, and, and so kind of um, obsessed. obsessed with trying to get people to, to be more like-minded as us and, and to think the same and to, like I said before, be brave and step out from the, the crowd to, to, to form a partnership, a community that is very different to what we have right now. We need love, right? It's interesting because a lot of the publishers have really suffered uh, it, it, over the last 10 years and um, we're partnering with all of them actually from people like Hearst because in the eighth stage, the old world is people want to keep, everyone wants to keep you on that stage, you can't leave it on that feed and you can't even put links to go anywhere. Ours, you can tap on content and go out. Right, so we don't mind, because you watch ads for two minutes a day quite separately, if you want to go and discover an artist, a musician, whatever, a publisher, so by, there's a group called Byline um, that's fabulous and they have a group, uh, they have over 1,800 local journalists and reporters all across the UK that they're empowering and they are all joining uh, we are eight. So we've done a bit. In fact, we're one of the partners of the Byline Festival. But it's about giving real voice to local journalism again. And um, if you share your geo information, you can then uh, get local uh, uh, information and, and reporting in a local area in a much more organic way from the person, from the local journalist. Uh, personally, and, and that's really exciting because it's a whole new frame. There's another one, uh, Citizens Assembly. You know the whole idea of if the world was reduced to 100 people, there'd be this many educated, this many people from China, India, etc. That in real life has been created by this incredible human being. We're going to have those 100 individuals at the heart of the people's platform also reporting on global news through their lens. So this is about sort of the macro, seeing the world through another. This is all about let's do this for others, but absolutely local as well. Yeah, absolutely. I think that, you know, um, organic reach, and I think every brand is, is challenged with, uh, you know, everyone's putting a lot of money and effort and time behind their organic voices, but most organic reach is also under 1%. So, and then you for, everyone's forced to pay, um, even charities, to pay to actually drive the real reach. So the answer is absolutely yes. And not only that, we're encouraging you to connect with those people and then build your own database. Because I think when I'm old enough to know, when Facebook first started, we all thought it was this wonderful way to grow your following, which we misinterpreted as your database. But it actually never was. It was their control and we were fueling it and funding it and creating the content for it. So not only do we want you to reach the people that you've so lovingly nurtured, we want you to be able to grow them and do other things with them and inspire them outside eight. And that's part of what the, the you know, enabling someone, we did a test with seventh generation in the States 
um, before the election and they were encouraging people to vote. And the ability to then tap on a piece of content and go out to their world, learn about things and then register to vote was really transformationally different to hopefully capturing something with an organic piece of content. So absolutely yes, and we don't just want you to engage with them, we want you to deeply connect with them and change the world with them in any way possible, even outside us. We want to fuel that, uh, that change. 